It's season review time. Not only just season review and transfer window, it's also decision making time for us. Do we stay at Napoli or do we leave? Hello and welcome to Club 4, episode 26 of Half Star to Five Star here on Football Manager 23. I'm Russ Cunt. Today we have the season review and transfer special here with Napoli. As you can see, we are on the season review screen at the moment. But we do need to make a big decision. Do we stay here at Napoli or do we leave? We said it in the intro. We said it at the end of the last episode. Potentially going to Man City, Man United, Chelsea. It's also a European Championship season with uh, the European teams. Do we go to one of those if a decent job comes up? When I say decent jobs, I mean England, France, Italy. One of those jobs, the, the big, big jobs you really want. The ones that we are going to win the big trophies. If one of those come up, do we jump to them? It's, it's going to be a bit of deciding what to do and picking the right choice for us. I mean, the right choice might be to stay here at Napoli at the end of the day. But let's just jump into what we can do at the moment. Let's do the season review. And as you can see from this, treble for us. So we won the Serie A, we won the Coppa Italia, and we won the Coca-Cola Super Cup as well. New arrivals. Signing of the season goes to Nicola Barella. We didn't pay any money for him. 48 games, 52 games, you include the, the bench appearances. 7 goals, 17 assists, 7.21 rating. Absolutely fantastic signing. Djokovic was another good player for us. 3.6 million we paid for him. 7.42 over the 19 games that he played. Registered eight assists in those, so he's going to be a little bit of a magnet out there. Um, magnet to the ball to him to put it into the box. He's going to compete with Lizama as well out on that right-hand side. I've got no issues with that right-hand side of the pitch at the moment. It's absolutely fantastic. It's probably one of the strongest things we've got other than the attack. Very, yeah. 37 goals in 52 appearances, five assists. We paid a lot of money for him, but it did pay off. And Galan registers up there as well. 53 million, 15 appearances, four goals, six assists. And down on the lower end, Magusa. We're just going to get rid of him, aren't we? He doesn't want to play for us. It's a bit of a waste of 3.6 million. So if we can sell him for 5 million, make a little bit of a profit on him, I would be happy. Andreas Sambo picking up that injury. I'm hoping it doesn't affect him too much. Season results then, so we got an A- minus for winning the league. As you can see from there, we got 100 points. We went 20 Serie A games unbeaten in the end of it. Um, the only game we lost in 2030, whatever year we're in, uh, 2032 was against Torino at the start, which is this one here, start of the year. They beat us 2-1, and then we absolutely walloped every team that come up against us. Getting seven clean sheets in a row. The last time we conceded was at the start of April. So, Andy Lever, what a goalkeeper you are. Champions League got a C minus that going out against Barcelona in the quarterfinals. That's the one trophy I wanted to win. Couldn't deliver it, so we get knocked out. That's the reason we, we potentially could stay here is to try and win the Champions League. Do we gamble everything for that? I don't know. Coppa Italia, we got a B minus that, even though we won it. And then the Coca Cola Super Cup, we got a B minus that, even though we won that too. Moments to remember then. So, our biggest win was a 6 0 win over Spezia. Uh, Marcato getting a hat trick there. Uh, match to remember was the 6 0 thrashing of Spezia. We seem to beat a lot of teams 6 0. We beat them 6 0 twice this season. And goal of the season goes to Aguari against Roma in the Coppa Italia. It was a good goal. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a YouTube short on that one. So the finances then, still a four and a half star reputation club worldwide, no new sponsorship and no new uh, no new notable deals coming through. Sponsorship has gone up by about three million. Broadcast revenues down is because we didn't get that far in the Champions League. Corporate hospitality is up by 100k. Prize money has gone down, again that's the Champions League and the same for this one is Champions League. In terms of shirts being sold, Raspadori sold the most. Fairies not far behind him. And then got Barella, Galan, and Susik. How we lined up. So the team is in our Poachers Delight formation, the 4 3 3. Andy Levering goal, back for net, Scrinia, Marcato, and Lizama. Aguari at the basement field, edges out small Yannick. So coming in in January, and he's held on to that position really, really well. Barella and Victorino in front of him. Raspadori on the left, Chevalier on the right, and very up front. Every one of those players registered over a seven. They're all in the green. The lowest rating was Lism on the right hand side. He needs to step his game up next season, especially with Djokovic coming through. Those two competing for that right hand right hand side of the pitch is going to be fantastic. Accolades then. So I win manager of the year for last year and manager of the year of the season there. I'm also up for manager of the year again this season. 
Fans play of the season was Raspadori. Young play of the season was Marcato. Signing of the season we knew was Barella. Goal of the season we knew went to Aguerri. Top goal scorer we knew was Ferry. Most assists we knew was Barella. Man of the match awards goes to Raspadori with 9. Raspadori again with the highest rating of 7.4. And Marcato with the most passes complete per 90, 81. On, in terms of records, then, Barella breaks the assist record with 17. I mean, it was broken last season with Akimov. She's only just smashed that record now. Most clean sheets, 31 for Andy Lever. I've got a decision to make with the goalkeepers. Do we sell Andre or do we keep him? I'm, he's not going to get in the team with Andy Lever, so maybe we sell him just to fund some new players coming through. Uh, most league goal score was Rastadori with 119. Highest transfer he paid was at £17.5 million. Pound. Could raise £97 million for Ferry. And our oldest goal scorer is Skriniar, 36, 36 years, 361 days. So history in the making them, winning the treble, Napoli treble winners, absolutely dominating Italian football. Uh, managers type dynamic timeline, just need to skip over that, don't we? So this is our best 11 then, Lunin in goal, it's not going to be long before Andy Lever takes over that position. Uh, no one's come into there, Susic is now into the first team. Raspadori on the left. No one else has really joined. It's only Andy Lever that has managed to join uh, join the list of the players, but he's on the bench. Antonio Silva's there, but he's left the club. Roger's on there as well. So maybe in the next couple of years, we edge out some of these other players. Club profile then. So Hardcore fans has gone down. Family's gone down. The Fairweather's gone up, and the casuals have gone up as well. We gained 5.7 million extra followers on social media. That is because we are dominating Italian football at the moment. Uh, club meeting, I'm just going to accept that for now. We can obviously change it. In terms of squad dynamic, Kim and Jai's leaving us. So one of these guys will probably step up. Maybe Susik, maybe Lever. One of those guys will go. I'll do team meeting off camera as well. Training destination, I think we'll stay in Italy. We don't want to spend the money going anywhere else. Um, there were a couple of awards that went to some of the players then. So, scrolling down here, as you see, as I said, Manager of the Year has gone to us. Lever is named Goalkeeper of the Year. There we got top goal scorer. Raspador, we got the Exemplary Career Award. And he got Player of the Season. So, we're doing quite well. The squad is doing fantastic. Quick look at this then. So, goalkeeper-wise, we still got Barisha coming in. And Barisha, I think, can play the backup. Andre needs... He needs game time, and he's not going to get it here with the way Lever's playing. So maybe we shift him out. If we get that 60 million, we can fund another centre-back. Left-back, then. I mean, Lismore's not going to play who's going to play it right. So is Djokovic. He plays in the centre. So we've got these. I'm happy with the left-hand side. At centre-back, I don't... When's he coming back from his loan spell? This guy that is going to be joining us. We paid £20 million for him. He's a wonder kid defender. 18 tackle him. Physicals look great. Mentals look great as well. He can play it right back as well as centre back. He is out on loan till. Well, it's just saying 30 36 here, but 20, 20, 20 36 now, but I don't think that's that. We'll just have to check it when, the, when the, uh, the actual transfer goes through. I think we need a centre back. With Kim Min Jai leaving us, it leaves us with Marcato and Skriniar. You're not going to be at the club. You're potentially not going to be at the club. We are very, very light there. So one centre-back, maybe two centre-backs coming in. Right back, I've got no issues out whatsoever. You're leaving us. Maybe you'll compare on my left-hand side. So I'm happy with left there. Uh, right there, sorry. Defensive midfield, happy with that. Midfield, I'm also happy. I mean, I don't want to bring anyone into the midfield, spend a lot of money on them. And the edge, like Victorino, Susik, Smoljanic, Barella, Aguari at the team. We've got Pusey as well who could come through. He's got that four and a half star potential ability, so he could potentially come in instead of going out on loan. Left, I'm happy. Right, I'm happy as well. Mason wouldn't play there. Try and sell Dumont. And up front, we've got Ferry, Roger, Raspadori. Only one of those are players I can play there, so that's not an issue there. So two centre backs, definitely an issue. And maybe sell Andre. We'll come back when we've got a couple of transfers through. Whilst I think of it, I'm having a look here at the jobs that's going around. The only big ones that are potentials for us to go to are Chelsea and Tottenham. Chelsea finished 12th last season. I don't really want to go there. Tottenham finishing 8th. Have they got European football? No. So that rules Chelsea and Tottenham out. Chelsea are the 
He had the better reputation than what Spurs do. But I want to be the team that's going to be Champions League. Man United and Man City, they've managed to stabilise their managers. Monaco finished 8th in their league. Is that European football? No. So Monaco's off the table. So the, the choices are stay at Napoli and go for broke with the Champions League or wait to see when the merry-go-round happens with the national jobs. If England come up, that's where we'll probably end up going. Look at all these lovely awards then. So Raspadori wins MVP for Serie A. Best under-23 goes to Marcato. I'm pretty sure he won that last season as well. And best goalkeeper goes to Lever. Uh, Lever won it last year as well. Let's click and check on these. Uh, Marcato, yeah, he won that one. And did Raspadori win this one? He did not. I went to Liao's, but Raspadori did win it the season before. So... We got some very good players at this club, picking up lots of awards. We have identified one player that we are scouting at the moment. If we have a click on here and then go to Recruitment Focus, is it going to show up? I don't think it is. He's a defender from... He's over in Germany. I can't actually remember his name. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't... No, it's this guy. Is it this guy? No, it's not this guy. I can't remember his name. When it comes up through, through it, through the scouts, we'll, we'll let you guys know. It's going to cost like 41 to 50 million to bring him in. Pretty strong centre-back. That's what we need. Right, this is the centre-back we're looking at. Uh, Edmund Tapsoba from Leipzig. He's 33 years old, though. That's the issue. But, I mean, the, st the stats look great. The attributes look absolutely fantastic. Marking of 16, passing of 16, tackling of 16. Composure, concentration, decision making, all at 16. Physicals look great as well. Let's, let's approach his agent. Let's see what they want to do. See if we can go from that. Keen to join us, but it's going to cost us 42 to 61 million pounds. That's a lot of money. And then he wants nearly 100k in wages. Let's contest that. They've gone down to 84 to 110. It's just this price here that's putting me off. We have put a contract out for... We'll just, we'll just agree to that see what we can do. We have put a contract offer in for Roger Ibanez from Juve. Again, he's another 33-year-old. Physicals look good. Tackling 17. So he's, he's on the level of the other guy from Leipzig. And he's going to cost us nothing. He wants 22k in wages as well, which is pittance compared to what the other guy wants. We'll just see what happens. If we, this guy comes in, great. If we have to go for the other guy, then we have to. If, if we get neither, then we'll have to look further afield for our centre-back. I keep checking back to this screen every now and then just to see what jobs become available. And the Dortmund job is now available. So they finished fourth in the Bundesliga last year. That would give them the Champions League spot. They were 13 points behind Bayern who went unbeaten. So that would be a, a, a monumental task to come in here and try and win something. If we have a look at what players you've got left over, they've got Makoko. They've got Adiemi, so they've got some decent players. I mean, this guy looks quite good as well. 28 years old, Norwegian international. Look at that value. But again, look at the value of Makoko. That's ridiculous money. So, that's an option that we could potentially look into applying for this job. Go back to that, that, that screen where the jobs are. They are rich, the job's available. Do we put our names in the hat and then delay it until until the international jobs come up? Or do we leave it a week, see if it's still there and then apply? I think we leave it a week and then apply. I think that's our best option. Huge transfer news then. Andre has joined Chelsea for £51 million. Pound. Can go to £55 million. Uh, like, As I said, he wasn't going to oust... Lever at a goal. Lever is our first choice goalkeeper. He's an absolute wonderful goalkeeper. He's probably going to be in goal here for another 10 seasons. So he's out. This guy's coming in though from Juventus to go at centre back, not costing us the, the, the earth either. £22,000 a week. Free transfer from Juventus. Yes, he's 33 years old. We've got Skriniar. We've got him. We've got some players there. We're now going to go and invest that money that we got for Andre. In another defender, we've got £46 million to go and spend. I think we can find 
a young centre back that can complement Marcato. So it'd be Marcato and Scrignar and Obenez and the other guy, or however combination we want to do it. That's what we need to be looking at. So gonna spend the rest of the window trying to find that centre back. No one else is gonna be joining us, I don't think. We have officially changed over to the new season. We're gonna have a look at the season preview just to start with. We are predicted to win the league at the moment, 7-5 to five to win it. We also have Lever, Marcato, Nets and Ferry in the Dream Eleven. Ferry, the best player in the league. Marcato, the third best player as well. What's this guy? Is he, oh, he's an attacking midfielder. We don't need him. It's going to cost a lot of money as well. We haven't had any other transfers come in, go out. We're looking at Edo Militao again. It's another 34-year-old defender. But he's he looks still good for his age. If we can get him over the line for six million, that'd be brilliant for the team. It's another defender that in an area that we need to improve, and it's cheap. Wages might be a little bit of a problem. He's on three hundred k at Real Madrid. If we can get him in for two hundred k, that would be great. We'll just see what happens. It is the first of July. We'll go through the players coming in the door. So the first one, a wonder kid, central defender Thiago joins us from ATP for twenty and a half million pounds. He is a two-star current, but a five-star potential defender. As I said, he is a wonder kid. Tackling of 18, technique of 16, marking of 12. So he does need to work on that if he's going to be a centre-back. Heading of 12, jumping reach 12. So he's not going to be jumping up for the balls. He's not going to be like Marcato. Mentals look good. Physicals look great as well. He has gone back out on loan to ATP for the rest of the season. He will be joining us again on the 1st of January 2033. So it's only six months he's going to be out there. Then he comes in. This makes me believe that I don't need to go and sign another defender. We'll get Ed and Militao in if he wants to join us. And then um, this is going to be the guy that comes in and holds the fort for us. The other guy is Roger Ibanez. Uh, joins us from Juventus on a free. He's a two star, two and a half star current ability, two and a half star potential defender. Does look pretty decent for his age. Hoping he can hold up for the remainder of the season. He is going to compete with Skriniar. They're both round about the same age, although Skriniar's probably four years older than him. Maybe a little bit better if we go by this rating here. But yeah, they're, they're going to compete for one role. Marcato and everyone else is going to compete for the other side. Team is shaping up nicely. Transfers out though. So, um, Volpato's gone. You knew we had that deal arranged with him 13.25 million pound out to Lazio we have made a little bit of a profit on him bought him when we were at Birmingham brought him along to Napoli and then just last year didn't play as many games for us went to Lazio had a fantastic season and they have brought him in so I wish him all the all the luck going to that club released players then so I've clicked on the wrong screen there there we go so Li Yang's gone never really made it did he Brought him in for a quarter million pound from Lazio and played one game for us before we shipped him out on loan. We brought him in really because he's Chinese and we thought we can get money for him, but we can. Fermenti has also left us on a free. He wasn't going to make it in the team either way. And from last season, no one else has left us. Well, no one of importance has left us. Players coming in then. So what we're looking at in the moment is Adam Miller Town. Player's going out, Ethan Dumont, we're going to try and sell him. It's a loan deal at the moment, so I'm going to try and arrange for that to be with a future fee if it does work out. We'll come back once we've negotiated all the deals. Um, it looks like is going to be going out as well, £5.75 million pound for Brighton. Hopefully he goes and hopefully he can go and be happy. Old man, Edda Militao, comes through the door then. We'll send him on a course there. 34 years old, elite centre-back. Comes in as the second best defender competing with Skriniar. So we've got four really good defenders now here. Physicals look so good for his age. The technical side of his game is fantastic as well. So is the mental side of it. So it's not just what he can bring on the pitch. It's what he can bring to us off the pitch as well. I'm so happy to get that deal over the line. Transfers out then. So Mogosa could be going. Pretty much he is going to be going. We had loan offering for this guy. I've rejected it because it was ridiculous. So Yannick could be going. Treviso is going to be going out on loan. And that is it. Transfer. Let's have a look at these ones here quickly. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through with that deal. Uh, transfers in. We are going to try and look at bring, looking at bringing this guy in. Pascal Moore. It's going to cost us £44 million plus add-ons. He does look good if... 
playing in that deep line playmaker role, playing potentially in the central midfield as well. If small Yannick goes, we do need to replace him. This is the sort of player that we are going to be looking at to bring in to replace him. Hopefully we can get it across the line. Quick look at the job front then. I mean, we did try to apply for the Bayern, uh, the Dortmund job, sorry, but that went quite quickly. They weren't hanging around. Other jobs that are insecure. So France is insecure. Spain is insecure. I don't actually know how England are getting on in the trophy. They're in the semi-finals against Germany and so are Italy. So if either of those are going to get knocked out, their job could become available. I mean, England's not even won a European trophy yet. Have they won a World Cup since? Yeah, they won the 2026 World Cup. So they're going to be aiming to win this one, aren't they? If they get knocked out, we'll apply for their job. Otherwise, we're looking at France, Spain, potentially Italy. Well, the England job is now insecure. They've been knocked out by Germany. So we're waiting on the Italian job now. Waiting for the 12th, I think it is, when the... Uh, the final of the World Cup is, uh, the World Cup, the European Championships. Have a look at the schedule. The 11th. So that's what we're waiting on. Will he get sacked? I'm hoping he does so we can go in for that job. If not, it's looking like maybe France is what we apply for. Maybe Italy if they go out now. But I'm wondering if that job's going to be secure based on the fact that they've, they're doing quite well. Um, we'll just skip through. Oh, hang on. The, the job might become available now. Uh, France. No, it's not on there. European Championship. So Italy did get knocked out, but they're not going to be sacking that, that manager. So we're going to be hoping to get the England job, potentially the France one. So the European Championships has ended. Who ended up winning it? Let's have a look at the schedule for the senior squad. It went to Germany. So... We now need to... Or well, did they win it? Did Germany win it? Yeah, Germany did win it. So, job-wise then, we are looking at England, France, Spain as our top options. We'll, uh, we'll apply for that one. And we will apply for the French one. I don't know if you have job interviews for the national ones. We'll apply for Spain as well. Might as well, because they are the, the, the top-ranking teams, uh, or countries, shall we say. And we'll see what happens with those. If we get any of those jobs, we will leave Napoli. I, I don't want to do the dual jobs. I don't want to do national and the uh, and, and, and a club team. I, I, I think it'd just be too much for the channel, too much to keep on top of. Let's have a look at the recruitment meeting then. We'll attend it just to see what they say. Um... There's nothing really I want to look at. That's all fine. I don't want to look at any of those players. I will just end the meeting there. So we'll come back once we have a job, concrete job offer from either of the nations. We'll have a look at them all and decide which one we want to go for. I know where I want to go, but it all depends on the money. Well, all three of the nations came in for us. I rejected Spain because um, I'm going to accept the England job. France was rejected because of this wage here. We have a look at my current wage. going to... England are going to be offering me 105. I'm on 22 and a half. So it's a significant increase to take on this England job. We will we'll accept the offer. And there we go. England manager. So I think the next thing for us to do is to resign from Napoli. It's It's been a fun ride with them. We did the three seasons like we do at every other club. Winning the treble, winning the double, back-to-back -back Serie A, back-to-back -back Coppa Italia. We just couldn't deliver the Champions League. And I don't know if the side I've got now could deliver the Champions League. I don't want to speculate and do, and do another year and it be a, a year of waiting for an opportunity like this to come up. So we do take the England job. We are going to be looking to win the World Cup and the European Championships in the four seasons that we are going to be here before we move on to what could be a premiership job to win the Champions League and the Premier League. So they welcome us on board. Uh, set to divide his time between club and country. We're not. We are just going to be doing the country side of things. Going to use this, the 4-3-3 DM wide. It's what we use at every club. It's the Poachers Delight. It's my favourite formation here in um, Football Manager 23. It's so, so strong. But having the national side as well, we could 
like trial a lot of things, trial a lot of formations, trial a lot of tactics just to see what happens. We're not restricted to trying to sign players to fit a formation. We could bring players in, just pull them in and see what we can do. What are they saying? So they're top ranked at the moment. We're playing at Wembley, one of the best stadiums in the world. Most cap player is Raheem Sterling. Harry Kane is the all-time goal scorer. We need to maintain this top spot. We need to win trophies as well. Uh, Foden up front, Smith, Saka, Bellingham, Elliot, Rice, Thomas, Shifa, Gai, James, Lever. Got some good players here, especially Andy Lever. He's going to be the focal point of my team. And uh, yeah, this is the next leg. The next leg being here in England, back in charge of them. We need to jump onto Napoli quickly. Go on my profile and... No, it's not on there, is it? Sorry, it's on the club vision. Where did you resign from your jobs? We... How do you resign on Football Manager 23? Contract, there we go. And we immediately resign from Napoli. And have a quick look at what's coming in on the inbox. Quarter final draw, that was all to do in Napoli. We have been appointed here in England. Their expectations, not worried about that, but we need to get to the World Cup. Welcome into the England setup. Napoli have confirmed that they have uh, accepted my resignation. I quit the dual role. Who's favourite to go in there? Marcus Van, Mark Van Bommel. Zidane should go there, really. Take, up, take over what I did before. It's a shame to leave Napoli, but... This is such a good opportunity to do for the save. Such a good opportunity for me as well. I mean, at the moment, we are now a four and a half star reputation manager. So coming in here to England is a huge, huge boost for us. We need to get that five star, don't we? So if maybe if we win the World Cup, we uh, we do get that five star. If, we, if, if not, then we go on to the European Championships. We go on to, to the Premier League, win the Prem and the Champions League just to get us that five star. So this is the next leg of our journey. In charge of England. In charge of our nation. Leg number five is about to begin. So if you guys have enjoyed that, big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you very much for watching.